All right, so we're back at North Town. We're doing another video and uh, thought we'd come back and take a look at uh, the V10 Mustang project. And it's actually progressed quite a bit. Now you guys have asked, where's the V10? Where's the V10? Why are you guys starting another project? But this is Scott's basically side project. Yeah, side because project. you're too busy in the shop now that you got all this YouTube fame. Yeah, you, got, yeah. you got people. That's been good. Yeah, Everybody good. yelling at me and saying, oh, you're so stupid. <laughs> But you're also getting people saying, I'm shipping you my engine because yes. I trust you. Yep. And now you don't have enough time. But this looks like something. Mustang. It was an 05 that had a 2017 Ford Racing brand new 5.0 Coyote installed in it, but then the project was abandoned when we got it. We bought it specifically for this engine and always wanted to pull this out and put it into the Bronco. But Scott, our engine builder, fell in love with the car, so we worked together with him and a colleague of his, and we ended up painting the car and driving it around as is until the Bronco was ready. Bronco's ready, so we're pulling the five liter out. The car is now in Scott's hand and he will be putting a V10 supercharged in there. What's the setup? What's the plan? It came out of 2003 F350. The plan is to stuff it in the Mustang. I had one sitting here. I want to do something different. It's going to be a lot harder than what I thought. There's not a lot of market for it. Yeah. So I'm going to have to cobble something together. All right. So Scott. Couldn't put up with the hood, so we put a new hood on. Yeah, new hood. <laughs> then we stole the holly dash out of it, and then you put really nice gauges in. And then I tucked the shift light in behind the vent. Oh, nice. Look at that. We got all new headlights, all new fog lights, everything for it. Oh, nice. So I have basically everything to do the entire job. Except time. Except time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, work comes first. Yep. Scott's V10 sitting under the Mustang. Like, okay, so you guys are wondering what's going on with the Mustang and uh, a couple comments, but like, so I just quickly like scuffed down as best as I could and then I just hit it with a spray bomb. But yeah. you, you went and re-sanded everything. I re-sanded everything, I stripped everything, I power washed everything. Even uh, someone put a couple holes in the... That's disgusting. Yeah, so I, that. I patched that all up and welded it all in and did all that stuff. So, so when I started building the car, I had, I had zero, like love for the car. Love for the car. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah, the problem. Yeah. So I needed access for my wiring harness. I just took a big drill and I saw, the holes. I saw it. Put a grommet. I put a grommet <laughs> in there. But, yeah. I just thought it was a really like hungry mouse because it really looked like it was a chewed out piece of. <laughs> I think. Oh, I remember that because it was awkward and it might have been a oh, couple holes. It was definitely and... awkward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So what have you done? We redid the whole engine, but we were, it came down to a thing where I wasn't sure what was gonna happen. And I didn't want to put a lot of money into it without knowing it was gonna work. Okay. Especially with the harness and stuff. Now there is those guys online that are doing that V10 build right now. Do it yourself, I think it's called. Okay. And they're doing a V10 with dual overhead cam, completely different. And they said they're gonna do 7,000 RPM. But the money they dumped into that, I don't have that kind of money. Yeah, yeah. So my concern was the harness. So this is an 04 block. Um, but in 04, a uh, computer isn't, it, you can't modify the computer. There are a couple guys out there that will do just the chips and put it into the computer, but that's not what I want to do. So I went and got an 07 harness with an 07 computer, uh, worked with Brad and we got the harness actually for the computer fired up. We know it works, but we don't know if we can tune it. I think Holly does have an option where they can add more coil packs. I think it gives you the option to have a V10 in there. Yep. So I'm pretty sure Holly has the capability too. But before you get that far, you got to make sure it fits inside the car, right? Yep. And that's kind of where you're at? Yeah. So the engine itself is uh, almost a one inch or just over a one inch taller deck, right? Okay. So, so meaning that it's out an inch farther this yes. way. So when it goes out an inch higher, it, the V is getting wider. Mm -hmm. So these cars come factory with a um, 4.6, the GT 500s had the 5.4, then you get into the Boss, which has the 5.2s, then they get 
so the platform is all the same but none of them have as tall of a deck as this thing does okay um i don't know if anybody i've tried looking on youtube to see if anybody else has done it i have seen one guy that has done it in a capri uh, very similar frame rails and stuff um but i haven't seen it so i don't know i don't see why when we measure it on a tape measure it works okay um so what we started off by doing is when it was a bare block we put that block and a five liter together and i took a set of bmr mounts and modified the mounts to make the exact same height so we're going to be pushing the engine forward instead of backwards I don't want to lose any anything. I want to keep everything stock. And so, so I want to use all the heater coil, everything. You're, yeah. So the block itself is only about four and a quarter inches longer than a five liter, which really is not very much. No. So in theory, I shouldn't have to change anything. Everything should go in. It should just bolt in. So, so we're getting ready to <laughs> nice. we're getting ready to do a drop in. So and, these BMR mounts off are, are, are off of four six? Um yes, both are off of five liter. Oh. But the four, six, and five liters are all the same. Yeah, the bell housings are all the same, five wheels are all the same, engine mounts are all the same, everything is the okay. same. So, so new BMR mounts, this is the, the same old subframe, but it's painted pretty yeah, now? Mm, hot tanked it. Okay. Well, I was going to go to a BMR K member, yeah. but I didn't want to invest that kind of money yet until I knew I could get this in there. Okay. Hi, like hindsight, I should have done it uh, because if the V10 doesn't fit, you know what's going in. Five liter. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> So five liter LS. Yeah. Did they make a five? So I I built the, the block all with our ARP everything. Um, oh, so all the internals are all, all you already rebuilt internal, the whole engine, but not forged yet. Oh, okay. I would like to get the engine in, get it running. Now Comp did come through and got us some cams, custom grind cams. Yep. So what the plan is is I'm gonna get it into it, get it running, and when it runs, that way I don't have to mess with tune. Once it runs, I'll pull the front cover off, change the cams out. And then uh, if Holly comes through, then that's a completely different world too. Oh, okay. And this is the original, was the yeah, five speed or it's six not, speed? It's the six speed, it's the GetReg MT82, which is not a fan favorite transmission. People don't like them. Okay. There is a few guys online that are putting some massive power into it, but they have to be built. Okay. Um, but right now this engine will only put out 360 horse. Well, I've, I've decked the block, decked the heads, everything. So it might get a little bit more, but we're not. I'm not really looking for any crazy horsepower but 360 horse, but it's also going to be maybe four and a quarter foot pounds. Yeah. Which if you compare that to a five liter, we're in the five liter foot pound. But at a lower RPM. At a lower RPM, a lot lower RPM. Yes. yes. So really, I don't know what to expect. I'm just going to do it. Now the guys that do run these in trucks. You expect. Yeah. <laughs> the guys that run these in the trucks, most of the guys that have them, love them. Okay. So, and they, everybody says they're just torque monsters. Okay. So we'll see what the torque now, the rear end is built for it. It's got the four tens of the Pazi now. Um, so everything in the rear end should handle it. All the suspensions should, ha should handle it. Okay, so, the so would, you, would you do that again? Um, so all, this all suspension, um, the rear end has been fully done. Now it has a set of four ten gears with full Pazi. Okay, um, what was the gear ratio before? Uh, 373s. Yeah, okay. Um, oh, it's so an 8.8. It, it did have an 8.8 in it originally. Yep. But I've done all the BMR mounts, uh, trailing arms, Pan art bar, uh, even up into the upper control arms and stuff. Uh, yeah, I did basically everything on the rear end. Yeah, it looks good. So, um, but you still have those cheap Chinese shocks. Yeah, hey, they worked last time. Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I didn't. I didn't mind them. They're okay. And it's funny because I actually enjoyed the ride in it, the hard, stiff ride. Okay. And it's that's the car was. I want the car to be built like that. Okay. So. And then it had a bunch of spacers on it for some reason. Yeah. To bring the wheels out. Um, to bring the wheels out only because that the bracket. Now I I think you just copied whatever whoever had. I it. whatever was on it. I yeah. put the brakes on properly so they worked. Yeah. <laughs> I left so it they, at that. They had the proper mount, but they had the mounts on the outside of the axle where it wasn't supposed to go, and in no in order for the caliper to line up, they spaced the wheel out so the caliper lined up on the brake. <laughs> So I oh, not, I didn't even fine. notice that. No. So they had two plates on each side, so, two quarter inch plates. So that the bracket on the outside. Which is why they had the brakes on upside bolts. down. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They had bolts out to here. 
Yeah. So that's why they have bolts because they had to make up for the half inches of space that they lost, right? <laughs> so now, so, so I get rid of the spacers. I got the new bolts, so the bolts will be sunken inside the rim better. So yep. I can get nice fancy lug nuts. Yep. And the caliper, everything lines up properly now, and the tires aren't sitting out, which is kind of I think right from the beginning you knew I had an issue with it. Not a big fan of that, but now it tucks right inside. Nice. So you can lower it. Yeah. Or if it hits a bump, <laughs> it doesn't cut into the tire. Which, or the which the problem was. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. So, and then, yeah, gas tank, I've, I outfitted it with a pump that will handle a thousand horse just in case we do decide to go. Just in case. Just in case. <laughs> in case I want to triple it, you know. <laughs> so once, once we're, we're debating, we're in, the, we're in discussion of whether to go supercharger or turbos. Technically, it is knockoff of a 4.6. Yes. So they do offer a lot of 4.6 headers and different stuff for the 4.6. And turbo-wise. Like, I haven't looked at turbo wise because oh, okay. that's kind of my goal is to get it up, get it in, yeah. running and driving first. Yes. And then I still have some wiring uh, gremlins inside I got to figure out. Uh, but do that first. I'm going to use the stock cast iron manifolds for now. Okay. If we do do supercharger, um, I'm going to retrofit the 8V. 16V. Yeah, 16V. So it has two blowers on it. Yes. So you are fine. Like we dropped one of those blowers off. You, what was that, six, six seven years, years ago? Six years ago, seven. That's awesome, and you're, you're gonna retrofit that. If Holly can run a V10 system, yes. and I gotta double check with them because they don't have a stock harness that has five coil plugs on, yeah. on each side. If they can do that, then we can talk about power adders. If not, you're stuck with a stock harness. Well, that's, and, 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 and with the and, stock harness, we don't know if it will give us the parameters to up the fuel injection. To, to um, yes. So we know that like for 04, they had injectors that can, I think they were 22 pound injectors. Now when they go to the 07, there was a higher pound injectors. Okay. But those injectors are the same as a 4.6 uh, uh, injector okay. or a 5.4. Yeah. So we can use injectors, we just don't know if the actual factory computer um, can be modified or increase those tables. Yeah. So the only real other option is a standalone system, which uh, quite honestly, I don't want to put the money into to, to do. Like you're getting yeah, so, into the $35 so, or $4,500 computer system, right? Right. So make sure that everything runs and fits and yeah. doesn't overheat like crazy with yeah. whatever ad. And so then, I still and want then to run we'll the computer core. Yeah. Um, so the next thing will be the intake. The intake is a... Um, kind of going to be complicated depending which way we go to, but um, what my thought was is to get a, a couple cheap four or six fabricated intakes, mm -hmm. cut two cylinders off, add three cylinders to it, and <laughs> just make it work, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Or if we do supercharger, then that's the yeah. So comment down below if you want them to see some turbos on the side, or if you want a 16 V 71 blower off a of two-stroke Detroit in the valley of yeah. this underneath a nice big hood scoop. I think it's the company's called uh, Dales or Dials. Um, they do a whole bunch of supercharger stuff. And they, oh, have, okay. they have a complete uh, front rear snout kit Oh, for the supercharger that I could literally just bolt right on. Nice. And we just have to modify an intake. Yeah. Um, the supercharger would be good because it's it's a lower RPM engine. Yeah. We already ported the heads and did a, Aaron did a crazy valve job on it for me. Um, port of the exhaust and the intake side of it and port matched. We still have a lot more we can go, but again, I didn't want to put a lot of effort into something that we don't know what's going to happen. Right, right. So I have absolutely no problem getting it in, get it running, get it driving. And then what, that's the hard part. Yeah. Then after yeah. that, just add now. Yeah, just keep yeah, Pile on top. Just, just, just keep yeah. adding. Keep adding. So then <laughs> we don't know how high it'll stick out of the hood. So I don't know what, I have three hoods just in case. So it's everything from that point. <laughs> yeah, you had my original one, you bought one, yeah. and, and the one that we picked up that we should have never fixed. Yeah, yeah. I'll probably not even that one. But <laughs> it cut a big hole in it and then put a nice uh, scoop on it or whatever, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, other than that, everything's coming together. Nice. Awesome, should we drop the car down, see if it'll fit? Uh, we can try, I don't think, the, I don't know how far the car will get down, and we're gonna have to really like, Grab the yeah, yeah. Well, we're all here. We we're got an extra hand. Let's we're do it. Around. Yeah. Put this on so that it lines up. But I think as as long as we don't scratch anything, and it's on you. Go up. Go up and then. Ready? Yeah. We're ready. What's that uh, gear shifter 
look like this. Uh, the gear shifter's fine. It looks like um, we might have to angle a bit. Where are we going? Uh, we'll go down. It's going to be really tight. Keep going. Ready? Yep. Yeah, we're ready. If I have to take those heads off and put them on after, I'm going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're okay. Yeah, you're good. No, it's going to work. It's going to work. Oh, this is exciting. How is it at the back? Is that transmission lined up? Yeah, uh, transmission. I think the transmission's about to poke through the... Car? The car, yeah. <laughs> like the whole spot where it's supposed to go. Okay. Yeah, we're good. We got lots of room. These bolts right here. Well, it looks like it's almost right on line too. It's going to have to go back a little bit. These two bolts have to go through the K member right there. So it's going to end up getting pushed back a bit. So I think... Uh, I can take those bolts out if one of the lower. Yeah, you're you're almost there at the back. Oh, oh. We got, I can pull the bolts out. Yeah, pull the bolts out. No. Like, you can bolt it in there. <laughs> That's tricky. Both of you are doing it at the same time. Like, what's going on? I saw it too. <laughs> it might, it should fit with the covers on, just that little hump there. Maybe four inches for these to sit down on the yeah. top and that's yeah, it. Yeah, there. It's not going to be too high at all. Technically it was, it's pretty much a 4.6. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good drinking game. Everybody <laughs> said it's pretty well a 4.6. Is the transmission okay? It's going through the center. Yeah? And it, it's going through the hole? Yeah. Well, it's just on top of the key member. That's as far as we can go for now. <sighs> it's in there though. You I can push it. his engine back. Well, you got to move the engine back according to this bracket. I don't know. We gotta go forward. No, it's gotta go back to line up with the. Oh, I gotta. Then I have to go back like two inches. Yeah. So that'd be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. We still have lots of room back in here to get hands in. Leave the clutch. Oh yeah, you got. The engine itself on the motor mounts is set at a one and a half inch drop. I didn't know what to do until we get the transmission and stuff bolted in, but yep. I could raise the the engine too. Oh okay. So. I was more worried about the oil pan sitting below the, it's not too bad, but we might have to, I might have to bring the engine up a little bit. Nice. But that's essential for it coming down probably another inch, the whole car will come down another inch. That's pretty much it sitting in there. <laughs> that's pretty sweet, man. That's a first. Yeah. For me anyway. I think that's, I don't know, has there been a V10 in a Mustang yet? I, I have no idea. <laughs> The internet will find it. Well, Ford did prototype one and they thought it was a really bad idea, so they never went into production. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah that's just <laughs> ugly. <laughs> gotta, you just ruined it. I gotta put the Scott touch on it now. <laughs> So you would leave that manifold alone if you went with turbos? Um, what I would probably do is I'd probably go to a 4.6 fabricated intake. And, then, and what I, if, if, I, if I was going to do it and I was going to go turbos, then I probably would probably throw the turbos up in the corners up here. Okay. Go fabricated intake and then buy two intakes and then cut and splice them together. Yeah. Fabricate it, but then that will put you on a front mounted um, throttle body mm -hmm. and then but that would mean I'd have to relocate the alternator which I'm still kind of working on I might relocate it anyway but at is least there, is there relocate for a 4.6 it's basically yes. 4.6 yep. so the, the, um, <laughs> You're not rich, the power steering pump is the same the AC is the same alternator is the same okay starter is the same starter is the same as a five liter also um all the parts are interchangeable right on so I think that's ugly as shit though that intake. Yeah, well, it's just halfway being sandblasted, so. Yeah. Even still, it's just ugly. It's just like, a, I don't know, it's a big ugly spider sitting on top of your engine. Yep. That'll be the next stage of what to figure out. Blower. But I would still have to have some type of intake. Temporarily. Yeah. So, so run this temporarily, but yeah. fully knowing that it's ugly and that you're going to get rid of it and yes. put a nice big yeah. giant blower on there. Honestly, a blower is, is much 
simpler in yeah. this instance for sure. Well, the rad should sit about here. Mm -hmm. We technically should have enough room for all my control, like all my accessories and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, on yeah, you're going back fans. another two inches. So yeah, you got lots of room. So it should. Uh, this is your the first sight for you. <laughs> I'm excited. This is awesome. And then uh, yeah, I just really want to like run the electrical really nice, run the battery really nice, and do everything. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. I gotta get on the Bronco because it'd be bad if you got this thing running before I got the Bronco. Isn't the Bronco done? Well, the Bronco's like looks done, but I have to wire it and all oh, really? it. Yeah, yeah. Like as far as a Holly kit, how hard would it be to wire this thing up? Uh, about three hours. Like, it's like ready to start. start. Yeah, yeah. It took me to redo the five liter. It was about three hours. I pulled the I pulled the Ford performance stuff off and I had it going in about three hours and it's the exact same kit plus whatever time it takes to plug in two more coils and spark plugs. Uh -huh. I have a full manual brake system to go on. I still have all the cleaning I can do. I have all brand new upper or brand new lower control arms. I gotta do wheel bearings, ball joints. I have uh, a bump steer kit. I have a full BMR rad support kit. I got a five liter rad with with a uh, fan and everything. Mm -hmm. So I have everything to go. Then next will be power steering. Get right. the proper power steering bracket. The yep. pump, I already have the pump. So we're, we're close. Nice. And right if, for 45 minutes a day, it's getting there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, so, the frustrating part is the lack of help. Um, I, I don't know if I can say it or not, but like Ford Performance. So when you got the car, it came with a legit Ford Performance kit. Yes. I know when we talked about it, you thought it was just a knockoff kit or whatever, but no, it's a straight up GT350 kit um, that you can yeah, buy. Talking about the brakes. Brakes, yes. the whole brake system. You can buy it right off of Ford Performance website. Yep. All the part numbers are there, but I was calling because I want a, the, the e-brake kit. Well, I must have spent about three weeks with them on emails and phone calls and stuff at the end of three weeks it was just sorry we can't help you we have no idea what you're talking about and the part numbers are on now you can use these blowers on the old hot rod engines the old 350s and 454s and four so that i can get a replacement caliper but even to the point of calling a ford dealership and going through a gt350 well i'm not a hundred percent and to buy a 600 dollars e-brake caliper I, I wasn't prepared to do that mm -hmm. but no one's willing to help the, to, to the, make sure, yes, that is the one yeah, you need. Even me get. supplying the part numbers, not willing to help, not willing to say, yeah, you know what, this that'll work. Okay. So that's where it gets really, really frustrating. And that was the main thing. If That was the main reason why I've got this car frame, basically, because the look of the car and the brakes make the look of the car. Yeah, yeah. And to have, I didn't want to put anything else on. So now I end up having to go to looking at like an electric brake. Will would offer some electric brakes now. Okay. So that's what I'm just going to do. So just another caliper that squeezes yeah. it. Yeah. All right. So. When you do something crazy that goes one off, that does get frustrating because you hit hurdles. But if you focus on one thing at a time and try to cross that hurdle, it makes the project enjoyable rather than looking at the entire scope of the project and trying to figure out, you know what, I need a thousand hours to finish this whole project. Where am I gonna do that? Forget it, I'm done. I'm gonna list it for sale, my loss, your gain. Um, we, we hate seeing that, but if you look at it, okay, I just need to get these breaks figured out and, and you know what, I, I just need to find a couple hours to make some phone calls and emails and whatever. And even if it doesn't, doesn't lead to anything, you're smarter than you were before you started. Yeah. But um, on, on that note, we also have a Facebook group that you can ask questions on. Now this is again, is a one-off type stuff, but we have a very knowledgeable group of thousands of people that are willing to help and might have actually been there before. So if you haven't joined the Facebook group, definitely join that. Um, and um, really just try to find some time. You did 45 minutes every day. You go to work every, 45 whenever. minutes to an hour. Every yeah. Day. I try to get between five and 5.30. Okay. Come out here to 6.30. Yeah. And then uh, start my day for work between 6.30 and 7. Okay. So as you guys can see, there's a pile of progress that's been done. Um, I live 40 minutes away from the shop, so it's not that I can drive to Scott and help them. And it's awkward for making videos because it is only 40 minutes at a time. But you can see the progress has been done. It's not abandoned. It's going to happen. Um, so definitely uh, use Scott and uh, all his project and everything else as motivation to get in the shop and do it yourself. So, um, and we're early in the season. What's that? We're early in the season, so I'm before Christmas. 
So I feel like I'm pretty far ahead to be able to have it out for summer. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's not bad. Yeah. So I, that's my goal is to have the Bronco done by, <laughs> by summer next year. I'm only a year behind. So thanks for watching guys. Get out there and work on it because if you're not filthy, you're not rich, you gotta get out there, get your hands dirty and just a little bit of progress every day is still progress. Here we go.